The Miami Dolphins unexpectedly making a playoff run at 3-3 three and three through six games, so everything's fine. Ryan Fitzpatrick has been Fitz magic. There's no reason to screw anything up. Don't tinker with the problem. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Throw any other cliches we want on top of the pile. Oh, wait. Tua Tagovailoa is replacing Fitz Magic as the starting quarterback. I've got some thoughts on this, Shereen. I'm going to defer to you. I've got some thoughts on why they're doing what they're doing and whether they should be doing it. But I'm very curious. What do you think about the move from Fitzpatrick to the fifth overall pick in the draft? Well, Mike, on the one hand, it's very surprising because they've won two games in a row and Ryan Fitzpatrick has done absolutely nothing to lose this job. He's completing over 70% of his passes. He's thrown for over 1,500 yards, 10 touchdowns. He's played well enough for them to win and, and be where they are. And so if you're just looking at this season, you keep Ryan Fitzpatrick in there and you let him play. But on the other hand, the, the, the bye week is this week, and they have a chance to give him two weeks of practice to come back to say you're going to be our starting quarterback. So from that standpoint, it really makes a ton of sense. And look, to have a coach who you know is not going to get fired after this season, he can do this. He can let the young guy, guy play and think about the future and not think about saving his job this year. Here's the way I look at it, very simply. I'm, I'm going to use the metaphor that I can relate to first and then get into more of the football analysis. Ryan Fitzpatrick lost this job the moment that the Dolphins used the fifth overall pick to take Tua Tonga-Vailoa. And here, here's the, the example that maybe some can relate to. We live kind of on the edge of civilization, so every once in a while a mouse gets in the house. And my wife and my son sometimes are like, well, how do we get the mouse out without killing it? It's like, hang on. The mouse died the moment it came into the house. The question is, when does the mouse actually become dead? So it's either going to be through the trap in the basement or the trap in the garage. or the, And we have a humane trap that we, that we also use. So I'm, I'm, I'm being a little extreme and graphic with my metaphor. But the point is this. This was inevitable when Tua Tonga-Vailoa was picked by the Dolphins. And I've been saying all along, the sooner they throw him out there, the sooner he gets prepared to be competitive at some point down the road. Now, I understand Patrick Mahomes sat out almost all of the 2017 season, and the Chiefs made it to the playoffs that year, and he played one game, and he was great the next year. But you know what? I still submit that if they had switched to Mahomes halfway through the season when the offense was sputtering, they may have been even better in 2017. We may have all been deprived of one hell of an impressive playoff run from this rookie quarterback who would have come in and done spectacular things. So I'm not saying what the Chiefs did was right. It worked, but it may have worked even better in 2017. I think the sooner you get the guy out there on the field, the better it is. This isn't about Ryan Fitzpatrick. This is about Tua Tonga Vailoa is ready. And it was inevitable he was going to be ready and playing at some point this year, ideally, once they made him the fifth overall pick. And the thing about Fitz. Patrick, you have to know when Fitz Magic is going to become Fitz Tragic because we know it's going to happen. And who better to know that it may be coming than the coaching staff that sees him every single day? And it's all about picking the right time to make that switch. It's Rocky Balboa switching back to Southpaw. The Dolphins think that this is the time to do it because they're in a position to be competitive. And if they can get an upgrade from Tonga Bailoa, and they got two weeks to get him ready because their bye got moved to this week and they got the Rams on the other side. Good luck, Tua. Welcome to the NFL, Tua. Here's Aaron Donald. But th this is something that actually can help propel the Dolphins into postseason contention instead of let's see how it plays out with Ryan Fitzpatrick this year. He's earned the right to try to get to the playoffs. They're not baloney, baloney. They can put Tua in, get him valuable reps, and maybe turn this unexpected season of postseason contention into a playoff berth, Shereen. And no one better to groom Tua than Ryan Fitzpatrick. And you saw when Tua came into the game on Sunday – Ryan Fitzpatrick was waving the towel and trying to get the small crowd that was there up on their feet and cheering him. There is going to be no bigger supporter of tour than Ryan Fitzpatrick. He will be there supporting him, helping him in whatever way he needs. And, and that's terrific. And Mike, let's, let's review what the other two rookie quarterbacks have done. One drafted, obviously, before 
Tua and one drafted after Tua. So day one, the Bengals named Joe Burrow the starting quarterback, right? He come out, comes out, plays all season, and has played well. I think we would all agree. The other one, Justin Herbert, was not supposed to start in for the Chargers, and he didn't in the first game. And then suddenly you have a doctor gone wild who sticks a needle in the wrong place in Tyrod Taylor, who, by the way, has not yet come back. And all of a sudden, Justin Herbert, your starter, goes in, plays well, wins the job when Tyrod Taylor was supposed to go back and get the job. How much do you think that the success of those other two quarterbacks may be sp- Bed up this process or were they always looking at the bye week I think that when you see the other two guys who were taken one five spots before to a one right after to a when you see those guys play and thrive I think that results potentially in pressure from the top of the organization working its way down the ladder and the questions are coming and when are we going to get Tua in and when is Tua going to be ready the belief in league circles is that Tua Tonga Vailoa was an owner's draft pick and that happens we know that happens the owners don't come out and say it because they don't want to come off as meddling but there are times when the owner makes it known what he wants and one of the privileges of being a billionaire is you don't have to give a direct order you just have to be a little bit subtle And the people who are employed by you, who would very much like to continue to be employed by you, will understand. The example I used when the Browns took Johnny Manziel in the first round back in 2014. Jimmy Haslam doesn't have to walk in the door and say, order a bag of Snickers. All he has to say is, I like that candy. What's that candy called? Snickers? I really like that. Then the next thing you know, Snickers are going to be falling out of every drawer and cabinet in the facility if people know what's good for them. So you don't have to come out and say it. And if you're Stephen Ross, you don't have to come out and say, put him on the field. All it takes is one well-placed question. And Chris Greer, the GM, gets the message. And Coach Brian Flores gets the message. And they get him ready. And he's good to go. And they see what happens. So I don't know whose decision this ultimately is. And it's not like Ross is ever going to say he made the call or initiated it. But the time had come to find out what he has. Because you know what, Shereen? Statistically, there's a chance he's the bust. Now, look, hey, maybe all three of the guys taking one, five, and six overall are going to become franchise quarterbacks, pro bowlers, Hall of Famers, best to ever play the game. But history tells us that there's a good chance one of them may not be very good. Now, 2004, it worked out well with Eli Manning and Phillip Rivers and Ben Roethlisberger taken in the first 11. But I'd become very antsy if I'm the Dolphins, seeing that the other two guys look like the real deal. I want to see if our guy is as well, especially because the guy we passed on is looking pretty damn good in Justin Herbert. What I find interesting, Mike, is two weeks ago, Tua didn't get in the game to a blowout late. And they asked Brian Flores about it, and he says, I don't see any point in putting him in late. I don't know what point that serves. So you fast forward to this week, same situation, and they put Tua in the game. And he throws two passes, and he looked good for the two passes he threw and what he did in the short time he was in there. But I'm curious if something changed in the last week where we're not going to put him in mop-up duty and get him any snaps and all of a sudden yes we're go- we are going to put him in mop-up duty and at least get some of those nerves out so he has some snaps and knows what to expect i did find that very interesting and curious that that it was almost the same situation two weeks in a row in a different response and i think it's exciting that we're going to see what tua has One way or another, we're going to find out. He's going to – and that's the thing. With no preseason, you know, you can't tell much from the two snaps from last week. From With no preseason, he gets the start. Does he pass the eyeball test? Does he belong? How does he hold up? Can he stay healthy? That's the big question because he had three lower body injuries in his three seasons at Alabama, and one of the concerns after he had the hip fracture last year – was can he stay healthy at the NFL level we'll find out he's going to have to avoid contact that is job number one and that's something he didn't do at Alabama hi I'm Mike Tirico and thanks for watching make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports